Barrett, thank you so much for joining me. I have a lot of listeners that for this year, one of the big things they want to do is tackle a home project, you know, updating it or fixing it up. We want to make sure that we do this right. We definitely, we see the fixer upper shows and the HGTV, but we don't want to be stuck with this huge debt uh, over our heads. So thank you for taking the time. My pleasure. Yeah, so there's so many different steps. I know I'm a fan of those uh, those shows, but I know there's so much that go into it before you like renovate or open up walls. But it all begins first of all with the budget. So whether you're saving up for a small project um, and you want to pay in full, or you may be looking for something bigger and need some help with financing, you got to have a realistic budget. So mm-hmm. how do you do? that when maybe this is your first project, for example, you know, not everybody's going to renovate every year their kitchen. So when they renovate the kitchen, it's their first time. How do they get a ballpark figure of how much to expect for a renovation or a project? You know, the the, the total cost of the project, mm-hmm. um, they're either going to pay cash or they're going to look to finance it in some way. And it's really kind of hard to back into, well, this is how much I can afford for a payment and then try to extrapolate that out to a loan amount and then get in touch with somebody that can do something that fits in your budget. You know, really the, the best thing to do is to just go big and um, kind of map out what you want Mm -hmm. and get in touch, reach out to some contractors. Um, uh, I, I prefer personal Mm -hmm. referral myself. Like, you know, you reach out to, uh, um, on your maybe your neighborhood Facebook page and see if there's someone else in the neighborhood who can testify that so and so does great work, Mm -hmm. you know, invite them out, talk to them about what you want to do, and just start getting some cost estimates. You know, in those cost estimates, you're either going to feel really good about the Mm -hmm. uh, information that you get, or you're going to realize that maybe you need to dial things back a little bit. Yeah, but really, it really just starts with getting some numbers from some real people that are going to do the work. Yeah. Cause I did notice like a couple years ago, we renovated our basement. Um, it was cylinder block and wanted to finish it up a little bit more so we can use it as a workspace. And we brought contractors in and originally what we said is we're still in the planning phase, but can you give mm-hmm. us an idea? You know, that way they knew they didn't have to s- squeeze us in as quickly as possible. It's like whenever they had some downtime to get an idea of how much it would cost. And people may mm-hmm. be surprised. It can be dramatically different between contracts that you talk to for a project, but it's, mm-hmm. it's definitely a good eye opener. I think we might feel like going for the cheapest is the best, but I had some really good conversations with contractors and I felt more comfortable with a slightly higher number because I felt like when they talked it over with us, they considered more, not what could go wrong, but have you considered this is a possible cost here or possible expense here. So great advice on, you know, checking out contractors. They don't mind giving, you know, estimates uh, to hopefully develop that relationship. Just let them know, you know, this is the the time frame right now, or this is the stage we're in. So I do know we see these kitchens and I've read in a couple places, like for example, they can be pretty expensive or you go for the bathrooms. Mm-hmm. You're seeing tens of thousands of dollars. But I also know that it's not necessarily going to give you the most bang for your buck come when it's time to sell the house. So are there certain renovations or um, projects that tend to give a good return um, that you've noticed, or there's any of them where they look nice, but you're not going to get all of that money back that you put in? Uh, Yeah, Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not an expert in that. But I I have spoken recently with a good friend who is the, um, he's the owner of a company called Property Specific Realty. And that's really, Mm -hmm. that's exactly what they do. Um, kitchen is number one, Mm -hmm. but, um, the thing that surprised me about the kitchen is, uh, the best investment that you could make is changing how the kitchen fits with the rest of the house, Mm. right? Yeah. Creating an opening, creating, creating an open, uh, gathering space rather than necessarily changing the footprint of, you know, let's take this this uh, little 
section here and flip it around and make it an island, um, you know, the best investment you can make is to is to open it up. Mm-hmm. Um, not everybody loves that, but then you have to uh, consider your motivation for why you want to refinance, why you want to um, renovate. You know, mm-hmm. are you are you making an investment to get the best return down the road, or are you personalizing it? You know, and those two things don't always work together. You know, you could, you could love, you could have an heirloom piano that you love to have in the kitchen and yeah. redesign your kitchen around this piano. Nobody else is going to like that. But um, most people like that openness, you know, mm-hmm. from one room to the next. And if you can do that, that's really going to get you your best return. Um, the next, uh, th- the next thing on the list was adding uh, square footage where uh, it makes sense. You know, um, like you did in your previous home or the previous project, you know, you mm-hmm. finished square footage uh, in the basement. Yeah. Uh, but if you have a uh, walkout attic on the second floor, mm-hmm. you know, per square foot, you're going to be able to get a better return on that one than the basement because um, just it's just how appraisers look at yeah. it. Um, master bathrooms mm-hmm. are a big one. Um you know, when you're looking at a uh, guest bathroom that you're really just kind of checking a box, do you have it or not? So mm-hmm. I wouldn't put a lot of money into that, but your master bathroom for sure. And um, if it, if you're able to create a walk-in closet in the master bedroom, that's another big one. Mm-hmm. So maybe you have a closet and it's a small closet and you can change the layout so that you can, so that it's a walk-in and make it a little bigger, then you know, you're going to get a pretty good return on that too. I, I think that's good advice. And then what you said, why are you doing this renovation? Because there's nothing wrong with like personalizing the space. If you're going to be here for a, a considerable amount of years, uh, you decided, you know, what we love this place. We're going to stay in the area. Go ahead and personalize, but understand there's a possibility you might not get that on the return. On the other side, if you know at some point, selling is probably going to be down the line, then when you're making those decisions, definitely keep that in the back of your head um, as to the material and also like the flow you mentioned, that's like incredibly important because if Mm -hmm. you fix that up now, when you sell it, that's such a huge plus for, you know, uh, buyers because they're like, well, I don't have to do this now. And they, they feel like they're getting more value out of that. So I think that's great to consider your motivations with the with any renovation project that you have. So we did talk a little bit about um, contractors. Um, I kind of just also want to talk to you a little bit more about, uh, you mentioned like the the Facebook page for Amazon, Mm -hmm. like any other sites would you recommend to check out? I know Angie's list is something that's out there, but is word of mouth really the way to go? Yeah, Angie's List is out there. Uh, Home Advisor is out there. Mm-hmm. Google, you know, I, I I really believe that word of mouth is the best thing to do. Because, um, you know, you could go on Home Advisor and you could hire XYZ contracting company. They're going to send somebody to your house, mm-hmm. talk to them, you like them, you hire them. Um, but then they, the company really is just kind of a revolving door of people that do work for them. And you really mm-hmm. don't know who's going to come and do the work. Yeah, good um, but, uh, you know, the best people are the people that aren't advertising. The best people are hidden. The best people are the ones that, mm. you know, somebody, you know, uh, your friend or your friend's friend had this guy come and do work and it was amazing. Yeah. You know, he's, he's busy. He doesn't have to invest a lot of money in getting onto Angie's list or home advisor or worrying about Google ad, li- uh, ad clicks, you know, cause he's just his work speaks for itself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those people are hard to find, but when you do, they're, they're worth their weight in gold. And they're, a lot of times they're, they're, uh, they could be cheaper too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we've actually experienced that, uh, with the basement, we had a contractor, he's now moving out. I was so sad to hear about that, but yeah, they are booked out. And so it was a a friend who recently had their house redone and we loved the work there. And then now with this uh, kitchen project, we're having a contractor kind of take the lead with this. And the same thing, um, he doesn't have to advertise uh, because he does good work. But definitely, if you're able to, I mean, online is great. 
to kind of initially sure. get information, but there is something like uh, visiting a friend and seeing their finished kitchen the, myself that makes you say, okay, I can trust this person with this project. And, you know, you feel yeah, better about online's it. Not a, mm-hmm. Online's not, a, not a, a bad option. It's just mm-hmm. if you know people or know someone yeah. who knows someone who's had the work done, I would absolutely go there first. Gotcha. Gotcha. There's a, a place, right? You know, um, digital is handy, but the in-person relationships can definitely help out. So let's yeah, say definitely. there's someone listening and they, they are interested, like, you know what, this year we want to take care of the kitchen or take care of the master bathroom, but they need help with financing. Could you kind of go through just high level what that process is, what to expect with that process and maybe a couple options? Well, um, Mm -hmm. personal loans Mm -hmm. are screaming hot in the financial services industry right now. Mm -hmm. Like you see a lot of uh, advertisement on TV. Um, I know they're spending a lot of investing a lot of money in mail. Um, They're simple. um, But the drawback, uh, you know, and and you get Mm -hmm. the money really quick. uh, But the drawback is the rates tend to be higher and mm-hmm. the terms are shorter, which means you have to repay more money in a shorter amount of time. Uh-huh. Um, so it, 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 depending on the size of your project and, mm-hmm. and what you feel like you can afford monthly, um, that may not be the best option. Um, but if you feel like it's something you're going to be able to pay off relatively quickly, then a personal loan is an amazing option. Um, and then there's always home equity. Okay. You know, yeah. um, you could uh, take out a home equity loan or a home equity line of credit, and you aren't going to get the money quite as quickly, Mm -hmm. uh, but you can typically access more of it and repay it over a longer period of time, which is going to make your monthly payments uh, more affordable. And Do you mind just for a second uh, telling the difference between um, the credit um, and the home equity loan? Because I think sometimes people in their minds put them together, and they are kind of related, but they're different things. Could you go over totally. the differences? Yeah. Um, there, uh, the, the biggest difference mm-hmm. is um, if you think of a, a line of credit as money that you have access to, a home equity line of credit mm-hmm. is uh, money that you have access to that you can uh, draw on or that you, mm-hmm. you, can, you can take from and you can use it and you can yeah. repay it. And then it's available to borrow on again if you want to pick up the project and you know, do another phase of it next year, you know, mm-hmm. you could borrow some and pay back. Um, so you have a great deal of flexibility. Um, a home equity line of credit uh, typically is going to carry a variable interest rate over the long term. There are a yeah. lot of options available where, you know, you have a fixed interest rate for a short period up front, but mm-hmm. you really need to pay attention to what the long term uh, uh, terms of that line of credit are going to be. Okay. Because they're typically not nearly as attractive typically aren't nearly as attractive mm-hmm. as the, um, uh, as the intro. Gotcha. Um, the home equity loan, on the other hand, is where you get approved for a lump sum of money. Mm-hmm. You know, we're going to give you that money. Yeah. Um, you can pay it back as quickly as you like, or, a, 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 on a fixed schedule. Mm-hmm. Um, but there's no flexibility. So you get the money, you use it, and you pay it back. And then if you need more, you have to reapply for a larger loan amount or, you know, it's, it's just, I don't prefer it for that type of project, especially Mm -hmm. since with a home improvement project, you may get into it and find out you need a little more than you thought you did. Mm -hmm. And the line of credit is going to give you that flexibility. Gotcha. Okay. So thank you. I, I wanted to make sure just in case people are listening and they're trying to weigh their options that they understand the difference between the two. Um, but do you mind kind of just taking through like, what is the process? Can people do it online? Do they have to go to a branch to to get that started where they can get financing for their home renovation project? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, you could go into uh, any coastal branch Mm-hmm. and uh, speak to uh, an account manager or relationship mm-hmm. manager. And um, they're going to walk you through the whole process. Um, you'll submit the application in the branch. Mm-hmm. Um, you would need to have an idea of mm-hmm. what you think the market value of your home is. You need to know what your um, monthly income is. It's helpful to bring a pay stub. Okay. Um, 
And it's also uh, helpful if you can talk to the account manager or relationship manager about what the purpose of this loan is, um, just because they may be able to make some recommendations along the way to help you make sure you end up with the right loan product. Mm-hmm. Um, and Or you could apply online. You know, go mm-hmm. to coastal24.com, log into your online banking, and you can begin the application there. Um, yeah, I think sometimes people get hung up because they're like, well, I'm not sure what the market value of my house is. So let me go figure that out. And then maybe I'll come back and apply. Yeah. Well, if you think it's 200 mm-hmm. and you later realize, oh, I think it's 250, mm-hmm. you know, you can, you can make those adjustments through the process. Okay. So um, to just have an idea of what some of those numbers are is, is really the important thing. Um, and through there, from there, you'll be contacted and, um, they'll go over the application to make sure that everything that you've entered is, uh, you know, what they think it is and, uh, go over whatever documents they're going to need and next steps. Perfect. Thank you so much. I I appreciate this Barrett. I think it can be a wonderful tool to not just, uh, add more value to your home, but add more quality of life when you take on the right projects at the right time. But, uh, to be able to navigate the finances that can sometimes be tricky. So thank you for explaining that and making that a lot easier. Sure. My pleasure. Glad to do it guys. And if you're listening and you're thinking, you know what, um, I would love to take on a project and I would love to work with Coastal. Please check them out at bankbetter.org. You can see all your options out there. And like Barrett pointed out, go into the branch, explain what you want to do, and they will help you out and personalize it to your specific needs.